And I would now like to recognize Ranking Member Ruiz for the purpose of making an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today's hearing is on a topic of critical importance to our national security and our public health. The fact is, we don't know when the next pandemic will strike. And in order for us to truly be prepared, we must devote the time and resources now to strengthening our biosafety and biosecurity so that we can ensure the health security of Americans all across the country. While the path to a biosecure future lies ahead, I hope that during today's hearing, we can identify workable, forward-looking solutions that the minority has long called for to not only bolster pandemic preparedness, but also foster innovation and ensure our country's global competitiveness. At the center of these solutions must be a whole of government approach that prioritizes the American people's health and safety. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, our nation has taken important steps forward in advancing this approach with targeted investments in pandemic prevention, refined policies to promote biological risk management, and informed recommendations to improve overall biosafety and biosecurity. In fact, last year's Consolidated Appropriations Act included robust funding for the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority to develop countermeasures in response to public health emergencies and biological threats. At the behest of Congressional Democrats, the Consolidated Appropriations Act also worked to address public health threats in biomedical research and improve oversight of research involving select agents. Compounding this work are the National Science Advisory Board for Biosecurity's recommendations to strengthen existing oversight of research that raises biosafety and biosecurity concerns. Released this March, after Secretary Becerra tasked the NSABB to evaluate our nation's biosecurity and, biose and biosafety frameworks, these recommendations demonstrate a sound start for enhanced biosafety and biosecurity standards here in the United States. These are all promising steps forward, and I look forward to discussing them in more detail here today. However, it's important to note that our work to enhance biosafety and biosecurity cannot and should not end here. Risks to our national security do not end within our borders. And with every step we take to bolster lab safety and security at home, we must do so with an eye towards strengthening biosafety and biosecurity on a global scale as well. That's why I was glad to see President Biden's executive order focused on growing our own take action to promote biosafety best practices abroad as well. Right now, a patchwork of lab safety standards and guidance may guide nations in their pursuit to bolster their own biosafety and biosecurity. However, we as an international community are without a consistent set of standards that we can all work together toward to reduce the threat of biological incidents. There is no simple solution to how we can achieve this goal, and every day emerging technologies further complicate our work. However, if we remain united around our common goal of protecting the health and safety of our communities, of fortifying our biodefense, and enhancing pandemic preparedness, I know that we can get there. We have the distinct opportunity right now to make a positive change with constructive policy that improves people's lives and prevents a future disaster. I hope that today's discussion moves us closer to that vision that bolsters biosafety, enhances biosecurity, and in turn, fortifies our national health security for generations to come. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. 